Welcome to Contextual Electronics. My name is Chris Gamble. Today we are continuing our PC build and, build and reverse, and we're going to be going over how to import the footprints from the schematic. So now this would be similar to a situation where if you had a schematic, say your friend made a schematic, you were doing a layout for them, and you wanted to import all those footprints into your layout, we would be doing that like here. So let's uh, take a look at the project itself. We're going to go and open up a, a similar pro uh, project folder like we had before. So if you downloaded this, remember there's a link in the description for this. So input footprint, uh, import foot, footprints from the schematic. Okay, and then this is, again, this is just another project folder here. All right, so now let's go and open up the layout first. Layout's taking a second here. There it goes. Okay, so now we do have the footprints, are, we do already have these footprints in here, right? So these are actually footprints that are graphical. I, I already inserted these. We're gonna go import the other, uh, the other footprints. Now, if you are interested in a challenge, you can go and delete these foot these graphical footprints and try and import those. Those should be in the graphical library here. We'll see those in a second. But if you don't want to do that, then we're just going to show you the, the slightly easier version here, and then we'll uh, kind of take you through to the next step. Uh, so what we're going to do is import the footprints, and then we can start doing layout. Now, this is this is very similar to the quote unquote harder step yesterday, where we were uh, we were doing a uh, you know you reset all of the component locations. And so you can always look at your, your PCB if you want to as well. But the idea is this, is this is the same kind of thing you're going to be doing if you're going from your schematic. You've got a schematic, you're ready to go, and you're pulling it in your, your starting layout for the first time. So let's take a look here. OK, so uh, first thing we're going to do is also open up the schematic. Oh, uh-oh, OK, here we go. So we have our remapping. So this is because this was made in a uh, KiCad 4.0. Now we're going to go into 5.1 here. Let's see how this looks. Okay, it doesn't like that one symbol here, but it should be okay. So it's basically going to put this into the rescue library. Everything else should be okay though. Looks like we did remap the R's and the C's to the device library. Uh, and then we uh, have a symbol library for 7555. So really the only thing that went in the rescue library here was the uh, uh, LEDs and the connector. So that's okay. Okay. Everything else should be okay here. So what we have is a two pin header, uh, the SAO header. We have a green LED. We have a couple resistors. We have some capacitors and then we have a 555. So everything's good here. Let's uh, mouse over, hit E to make sure that we actually have a footprint uh, located here. Looks like we do have SMD packages, SOIC8N, so that's good. And uh, we also have, we should have the, uh, oops, that's the value field. We want to select the part. And now we look at the, uh, we, uh, we've been using the hand soldering um, footprint here. This one actually may not map to the, uh, to the, new, the newer libraries here, so we might actually have to go in and replace those, which is also good practice for us here. But we're going to use the method where we actually update the board from the schematic here. So what we can do is we can hit F8. Nope, that's not F8. This is F8. Sorry, I have this on here. All right, so we have keep existing symbol to footprint associations. We want to, we're not going to delete extra footprints or single, uh, single pad nets. Um, and we're going to see how we do here. So, aha, yes. So we already see the errors that it already says we're not going to be able to find these. So we're going to have to go in and update, update the footprints for, uh, for what the newer libraries are. So we do have default libraries in KiCad. We're going to go through and actually uh, mouse over, hit E, and we're going to go and um, footprint library not found. Okay. Uh, we're going to go and this open up the library editor here, though. So basically, all of these footprints are, uh, we need to go and find the newer footprints here. So we're going to go into resistors. SMD, and then they did change these recently. So these are the default footprints here. And so you see that basically there is a hand solder here. We just need to go and select this new one. So this is the new one that we have here. So we'll do one for the resistors. We'll do one for the capacitors here. Same thing happened here. It's going to say it can't find this library. And hopefully I'll have to open up the library editor, or browser rather. <clears throat> Same thing happened here. We're going to go with, uh, well, we'll go with capacitor uh, SMD. And we'll go with, here we go, we have five, and then make this a little bit bigger here, hand solder. 
And the hand solder, all that means is just that it's a, a slightly wider pad so you can get the, the soldering iron. Like, so if this is the pad, the soldering iron has a little bit of extra room before the, the, the part starts. And so it's a slightly easier, uh, slightly easier pad to, to work with. Okay, so we did that for one of the capacitors. Uh, now we're going to go into diodes. So we could use the same. So basically, when I did this, I just used the same uh, hand soldering pad here. We can also use an LED uh, footprint. So we'll go into LEDs, LED SMD, and these should all be default. So if you're in KiCad 5.0, 5.1 rather, these should be the default installed libraries here. They are pulled from the the main libraries. Um, so we'll use this one here. Okay. And then, let's see, so then we have their package here. Let's see if this one works. I don't think this is actually a library in here. Yeah, so that library is not found either. So this is all because we made this with 5 or 4.0, and the libraries have changed, the default libraries have changed between the two. So what we're going to do is go into Packages, SO. And you see it's taking a little bit here because it's actually going and finding those libraries and loading them up. We're going to SOIC, SOIC 8. We don't need the EP, and then this one is a, a narrow with, or sorry, no pin seven. So we want the eight. So this should be the default, uh, the default one. Now you can always go and check the dimensions. I do like that they put the dimensions in the part name. That actually is a very good change um, because if you're going to get stuck with a, <coughs> a footprint that you're not sure about, usually having the actual package dimensions in there is going to call it out very easily. So it gives the the dimensions and then also the pitch. So I really, I really do like that. And you'll see that more and more as you, as you get into it here. And finally, this is the pin header straight. We want a 2 by 2 point, uh, 0.1 inch or 2.54 um, millimeter uh, header here. So we're going to go into pin header. Uh, pin header. No. Connector, sorry. There's connector and then pin socket, pin header, rather because we're doing the male, the male uh, footprint. OK, connector, pin header, 2.54. And then this is a huge library. So that's taking a, while, a second to, to load up here. OK. And 2 by 2, and we want vertical as well. So vertical, not SMD, we want actually through hole. That's what we're using here. OK. Okay, now we didn't do all of the components here, and what I'm going to show you is another quick trick here for doing this. What we're going to do is we're going to go in, we're going to show footprints here. We're going to expand everything. We're not going to group by reference anymore. We're going to group, uh, sorry, un unreferenced like that. So now it shows all the components. And what we can do now, should be able to do, is expand this out. Boy, I'm really having trouble grabbing these things today. There we go. And what we'll do is you see this is the new foot, footprint. We'll copy this and use it here. And this is just an easier way to, to go through. Uh, so you see, if you know, we only have what a total of ten components here, maybe eight. Um, so it's not it's not as big of a deal here. But if you had a wide range of components, you might want to go and just do them all, all at once. And so basically now we have. All of our footprints set to go. We have package SO, we have resistor SMD with the hand soldering, we have a pin header, and we have two capacitors and one LED here. Hit OK. Now we should be able to go back and hit F8. And now we see all of the footprints. So basically, it goes and pre checks that all of your footprints are here. And it has been processing it and it says, yep, it's good. We should be fine. We say update PCB, close. And now we're back to where we started here, which is great. So that is uh, you know, one of the processes for, for doing that kind of thing. If we want to go and move components now, we hit M to move. Mouse over and hit M. We, um, so this one is actually on the back side, so we want to hit F to flip. Uh, same thing here. We want to, actually, we can probably bulk select all these and hit F. See, that flips them around to the back side. Now, they disappear. And why do they disappear? Because we actually don't have the footprints turned on, on the back. So that if you, if you have your, dis your footprints disappear, then that's why you, that might happen. And at this point, basically, now you're ready to start going. You've now you've got your footprints in the board. And I would recommend that for repetition's sake, you go and you take this and you, uh, you go and do the layout again. right? Go through the layout again, and then generate the, the Gerber files again. And now you get that repetition of, OK, you know what the final board should look like. You can go and either you know, do a fresh board if you want. You can you know, move these parts around to see 
where, uh, where things may or may not work. Uh, see how the layout looks. Don't forget to do the ground plane like we showed in the last video. And then go and generate the Gerbers, and then see how close you get to the actual Gerbers that I generated. It's not right or wrong. At the end of the day, as long as you have zero um, rat's nests con connected, as long as you, sorry, as long as you have zero rat's nests left and all of your components are connected, then you're doing good, right? Don't forget to do DRC before you uh, you you send this out for fab, and uh, and you have like a final board. But in in that case, we um, you you just need to get through all these different steps. Now, if you're watching this and you're saying what the heck is he talking about, then you may not have watched the, the past video. So the past video that we did, we just went through and we did the layout, we did DRC, which is design rules checking, and then we went through and we uh, exported the Gerbers. So if, you, if you're very confused about what I'm saying, go back and watch that video first, then come back to this one, uh, because we're doing everything in reverse. And so uh, hopefully the, the numbering on these videos is not too confusing. We're, but we're going from look at the Gerbers, then do layout, then important parts. And then next, what we're going to be doing is actually creating the schematics. So that's something we did not do in this one, but we will be doing in the next video. So that's all for now. If you have any questions, you can always go over to the forum. That's forum.contextualelectronics.com. We have more information over there about this project and lots of other projects that we're doing. We also teach over contextualelectronics.com how to build circuit boards from scratch. Obviously, we're doing layout here, but we did not talk at all about the electronics design and you know how do you choose the resistor values? How do you choose the capacitor values? How do you find what components you want to put in here, like a 555 timer or a linear regulator or even what pitch com uh, header, that kind of thing. So that's something we do over at contextualelectronics.com. And uh, if you have any questions about KiCad itself, obviously we're using KiCad 5.1. Some of the dialogues have changed, uh, some for the better. And uh, you can go and talk about that over on the forum. That's forum.kicad.info. There's a lot more info over there. We'll have a couple more videos here about how to build a uh, custom board in reverse. And hopefully you're liking this. This is a new method that we're trying here. I uh, hope to, to do a couple more videos like this and more projects in the future. That's a big focus for Contextual Electronics. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you at the next video.